Yeah, good morning, everyone. And um, uh, it's, as I heard already, the, the speakers before me, uh, it's actually fascinating, this entire topic of um, artificial intelligence, um, which I actually explored first time for me 25 years back when I wrote my doctorate thesis on artificial neural networks. And I tried to apply them at that time in market research. And obviously, the technology was not there. But now I can see on how the technology comes into the market and how it actually drives the change, which is for me actually fascinating to see. And I'm um, very happy to be also able to actually explore that a little bit in the organization which I'm representing here. So if I can have, I think this one, right? Yeah. So what I would like to talk to you about today is process automation, how we applied it at DHL Global Forwarding and within DHL Global Forwarding in our shared service organization where we have brought that together and the impact which we can see there. So let me just quickly introduce to you DHL, DHL Global Forwarding. I'm sure you all know DHL. DHL consists of four um, divisions besides the mail business, obviously. We have Express, we have Global Forwarding, we have the supply chain, we have the e-commerce solutions. I'm standing here for DHL Global Forwarding. It's the biggest um, player in the market for um, air freight. We are the second biggest for ocean freight. And for road freight in Europe, we are also the biggest one. For this division, DHL Global Forwarding, we have a dedicated shared service organization, which I'm fortunate to lead. And we are calling that the Global Shared Service Center. The Global Shared Service Center, we have actually built as a an, as an multi-tower environment, multi-tower shared service organization, serving our business partners across the globe. We are operating on a target operating model, which is truly based on an augmented workforce management. What do I mean by an augmented workforce management? With that, I'm addressing our approach on how actually bots and humans work hand in hand, because I think that makes actually the real difference. It's not about 100% process automation. It is about process automation of the right pieces and to have actually the right skills and capabilities of both workforces which you have, be it virtual FTEs or human FTEs, and combine both together in a joint team to deliver the most of the impact. And that's what we can see in our organization, and that's what I want to talk a little bit about. Our human workforce is distributed about five, across five centers, as it was mentioned before. We are based in India, obviously. We are based in China. We are based in Philippines and in Colombia. And we have one virtual delivery center, as we call it, which is centrally based out of Chennai. And we have built it in Chennai because we could find there the right resources, also locally. But it also helps us actually to now bring all the volumes together and with that really utilize the, um, the benefits coming out of the bots. Because what I see very often in our in colleagues is that with individual bots, you can generate smaller, um, smaller efficiencies, but not really at scale. To utilize the assets, you need volume. You need the volume coming in. Because when you look at a bot, and we are hearing that a bot can replace three to five FTE. Well, that's true. That's true if you're operating 24-7. But usually the work doesn't come in 24-7. In most cases, it comes in in a normal eight-hour shift pattern. So if you bring that together on a global scale, you can then actually utilize the bots by doing a proper shift planning like with human workforces. And therefore, again, the management also of the bots is very similar to human workforce management. Now, how did we organize ourselves? Well, we have our human delivery organization, normal setup like you would have, and then we have our virtual delivery center where we have one area which is looking at the configuration of the bots, one area on the run of the bots, which is 24 seven monitoring the bots, taking up any kind of incidents coming in. And then we have a digital service lab where we look into the future, what are the next steps to be taken. More importantly, we are also the process, the process automation center of excellence for the division. So and for that I would like to explain to you a little bit more in the context of also the agile methods which we are using in order to balance actually between local speed and global governance. 
What we have done is with the process, um, process automation COE, we are facilitating actually across the division, across the globe, the best practices for process automation. We are also governing the standards on how process automation should be applied and should be done. When you are then coming into configuring the bots, we can either from the shared service center provide that as a service to every country, to every business partner globally, or the countries can do it themselves based on a configuration kit which we give to them. The configuration kit contains actually the, um, the standards, the instructions, and the data sets, plus also a development license of our bots. When they are ready, fully configured, they are coming over to the VDC again, centralized, where we run all bots. That allows us to do a quality check before they go in operations. And from there on, we can do then the production run of all the bots. All of that is then based again on our IT shared services within DPDHL, so we are leveraging the large-scale um, infrastructure which we are having in the basis. What we have implemented and when we started with the whole journey was the, the major point was about organization and process, not so much of selecting the individual vendor. We have come very, close, very fast to the decision that we will go for one vendor for our bots, and that is UiPath, and we have a strategic partnership with UiPath, which I'm very happy for now for the last few years, and we are progressing with them very well. But the major part for us was really to find the right process, how to manage bots, how to actually drive for the right projects for process automation. And with that, we have introduced our idea to robot framework, which actually clearly defines with different steps, different templates, different tools on how to collect the demand, to come from a demand, to go towards a configuration, do your, all your, uh, your sprint runs there, come into a delivery, and then, last but not least, if needed, also to delist the bots again. It needs to be a very structured approach, and it needs to be an approach which is clearly measurable and shows you the impact which you would have from a pipeline management down to a production delivery perspective. In the demand, it's always one of the critical elements is what kind of ideas should we go for, right? So we are um, applying here actually a classification which we call also ESOR. So what we start here is always with one question. Can you eliminate that process? If so, do it. Don't waste your time for uh, robotization or RPA. Can you standardize the process? Do that first before you can move on to further robotization. Can you optimize the workflow? Can you automate the process? That means automation within the uh, application itself. And only if you have answered all of those questions, we go then into robotizing a process. And there we have then certain criteria which we check through to evaluate which of those ideas should go first. We have put ourselves also one more criteria in the start, and that was that we wanted to go for the large scale, the large scale ideas first, to really deliver a tangible impact. Not only going for the small one and a half or a 0.2 FTE based projects. We said ourselves, let's go for those projects which deliver at least five FTEs first. Let's get that running, and with that, in the organization, you can see also an impact and a change coming through. I brought one example with me, which I think is a great example on how you can use actually those spots in a perfect environment. From my experience of what I've done previously also in a larger uh, transformation of an operational platform, we were had several years back the, the challenge that we had a mainframe system moving to a new application landscape. We had the typical problem of coexistence. Data needed to be transferred from one place to the other, right? How did we apply it at that time? We used human beings. We used the shared service center. We built up actually literally more than 100 people just to do nothing different, looking in one screen on the black screen as you have it here and enter it into another new modern application. Why? Because you couldn't build an EDI. You didn't have the knowledge anymore for, um, for the mainframe. You didn't have 
actually the time to build that EVM. This time, we are going through also an implementation of, a, of an operational platform at the moment. We've used from the start RPA technology. And we have actually what you can see now is it is very fast to onboard. We are switching on a country in a day. We can scale up. You could see easily during that transformation on how actually our curve ramped up. But now, after the, or as we are coming to the end of the transformation, we can see on also how fast we can then now delist the bots again. So you can really have an efficient move through a transformation here. Very nice example, I think, to carry forward um, in many of other transformations, operational transformations as well. What is key in, on the virtual delivery uh, center is, I strongly believe, is to, to have a clear measurement. As I said, from the start, we are measuring how many ideas do we have, what would be the impact actually. And again, it's very much similar to, an, uh, to a shared service center. So we are looking at what would be the processing time of individual tasks which we would take out. And with that, we are calculating the virtual FTEs. So what we can see here now is that in the demand phase, you can see all our pipeline, then we show the configuration and then the delivery. All of that we are managing very closely. I'm reviewing all the lists in a, on a weekly basis. And some of the learnings which I wanted to reflect here is on the demand phase, select the right processes. The selection criteria are quite, quite important. Be sure that you have the right SOPs. We are losing a lot of time in actually getting the right information back. What is the process actually? Because lots of the processes are not documented as you would expect them, obviously. Only if you have all of that, then go into the configuration. Once you go into the configuration, then have the right agile methods have smaller releases, quick runs, implement and ensure that the right business people are closely to the project. In the delivery, don't deploy and forget. The bots are as humans. They don't, might not take uh, a break for a smoke, they not go for a vacation, whatever, but they need to be taken care of. They need to be taken care of. Why is that? Because the environment always changes. Sometimes the uh, applications change, so the application landscape changes again, and you didn't get the notice. Someone starts a different process, and you didn't get the notice. Some data suddenly looks different, and you didn't get a notice. The problem here with the bots is, as you have such a large lever in efficiency, if you get into an issue and the bots can't operate anymore, you're building up a backlog which is very hard to catch up with with human workforce. That's why it is so critical that you are really having a resilient organization around it, that you have 24-7 operations monitoring the bots and then right away jumping on the incidents if and when they are coming up. In the delivery, I think it's also critical to look at scaling. Scale your solutions. Look at what kind of automation solutions you have and try to drive them from one country to the other. We have uh, more than 100 automation solutions by now deployed and developed. So what we are doing is the, we are looking at those um, automation solutions for some countries and are trying to apply them now across the world. We have started with one for Americas. Now it's a global solution across all countries. That's on how you can really scale up. And that's also the way on how you can drive change because you can come to a country, to a business partner, to a customer with a best practice. And it's a totally different discussion than when you come with a green, a green field approach and say, oh, I can do the world for you. Come with clear examples which you have actually already in practice. Now, from the journey which we have taken, we have started with our process automation where we was actually were a little bit behind of time in 2017, we took that up we focused ourselves really on the organization element. We scaled and we industrialized. At that early stage, we gave ourselves right away a target from the start, and that was let's automate 10% of the workforce. Let's digitalize our organization really by having 10% of our workforce being replaced by bots. That was a good message for us in the sense also because we were growing. And the growth of the organization 
we could have not managed without the bots. So it was obviously a positive message also to the employees, which made it more easier. We then um, focused first on RPA. We focused on one technology vendor, which was UiPath. Last year, we started to explore further into CPA, Cognitive Process Automation. Here we started to look in particular on the use case for Smart OCR. Here again, we are looking, we are working closely together with Abby. And we are doing now, actually on large scale, also their projects and trying to bring that into operations. We are having our pilots running and they are also quite actually, um, quite promising, I can say. And we have the next wave now coming in where we are doing also some, um, some test cases on Python and so on with machine learning algorithms for other applications. But it is important that we are not trying to drive everything at the same time, take the right evolutionary steps when needed. Our main focus this year is on orchestrating those workforces. Because as I said, the critical element is that it's in the end, it's human and bots who need to work together. And you need to look at it as one big set of workforces you have, virtual workforces and human workforces. And that's what I mean by augmented workforce management. And for that, we are building up at the moment a service management platform jointly with ServiceNow on their CSM module, which we have just implemented now and completed the implementation two weeks back. And we are just now actually stabilizing it. And the core idea here is we want to drive with ServiceNow, a platform which we call then GS Connect, we want to orchestrate all our workforces, be it the human workforces, which are sitting distributed in five delivery centers, which are categorized by skills, the skills of the task they can take over. And the uh, orchestration layer will actually um, provide the task based on the skills needed for the task to those human uh, workforces. And it will orchestrate also our virtual colleagues, our virtual delivery center, on the capabilities of the bots which we have down there, on the capabilities of the automation solutions which we have. And it passes through from actually receiving a job, a ticket, a work item, down to providing the final results to our business partner. So just to, um, to, to give you an impression of one example is, we are, a case which we are just implementing at the moment is, we are getting a request, a job from our business partner to do a customs declaration, for example. That comes in usually as an email with a long PDF attachment. Now ServiceNow will first assign that to our bot based on Abby, which will read actually on Smart OCR the documents. If there is a problem, then ServiceNow will address it right away to our human workforces to intervene. If that is then running smoothly, it will go further and it will then actually hand it over also to the RPA bot on UiPath, which will then eventually actually do the data entry in the local, uh, local customs um, solution, because you don't have EDIs for all those local custom solutions. And again, exception handling will be handled by humans. That's what I think is the importance of augmented workforce management. Look at it as a total. It's not a conflict. It is hand in hand. It is one team, bots and humans. That is the most critical part for me, and I think that's where we really get the benefits out of it. And therefore, let me just conclude also with one phrase which I found once when I read on how you can differentiate yourself in the area of artificial intelligence, big data, and, and robots. The phrase is from Thomas Friedman, and he said, we used to work with our hands for many centuries, then we worked with our heads, and now we are, we are going to have to work with our hearts. Because there is one thing machines cannot, do not, and never will have, and that's the heart. In that sense, please stay human. Thank you very much. <laughs>